Hey guys and welcome back to another video and well another new attacks strategy guide. So today I want to talk about the new strategy which is Queen Charge Super Minions. And the the nice thing about this that's actually sometimes the Queen Charge Invisible Super Minions. So I will talk about this new strategy, how you guys can use it, why actually is it now coming up, but before I'm explaining all of this, I want to see if I can make this work in one of my clan war league attacks. So this is not just a random legend attack or something. I want to actually use this in the clan war league and then we're getting over to some legend attacks. I will explain a bit more at what you're looking for and how you can actually use those strategies on your own. So let's get started on this base. The first thing which you can see on this one is once again the Inferno Tower next to the clan castle. So Yeti Blimp is just awesome over there, a lot of value. The next thing is kind of, well, a queen charge around this area makes sense after that, right? So the problem about, for example, hybrid uh, after that is that this charge will take a lot of spells. With hybrid, you always need those at least two heals, sometimes one, but most of the time two heal spells, otherwise it's kind of rip. So that's what we're going to do. Same queen charge, but different follow up. So we're doing the queen charge to either side, then a yeti funnel either on the three o'clock side or nine o'clock side. And then in the middle of that, you're using a jump spell. So let's say the queen is going to the right, she's going to the right, then jumping to the left again for the multi front tower. So we want to get the entire top side basically, then the king at the bottom side with the royal champion for tanking purposes, and then sniping the tunnel basically with the super minions. That's the plan overall. Two scatter shots are kind of scary, especially for example for uh, super minions because they're kind of squishy. But at the same time, it will be way more scary with, for example, Queen Charge Hybrid because the problem with Queen Charge Hybrid is the spells. Those spells you have to either use them for the hybrid or for the Queen Charge. Both together, like that's not that easily possible. On Queen Charge Super Minion, it's different. You can use the rages for either of those, like for the for the um, super minions or for the Queen Charge. The invisibility spell, uh, invisibility spell the same. You can use that for the super minions or for the queen charge. Different with the hybrid. You cannot use an um, a, a invisibility spell for the hybrid. That's pretty useless. So let's get started with this attack. Let's hope everything works. We have like the classic army over here. Uh, even though in legend I prefer not to use a jump. But I feel like the jump spell over here gets you so much value. That's just why I'm going for it. So let's see if I can make this work. So... The base is loaded, we are ready, hopefully ready, and I just have to hope that some of this top side is not trapped. Okay, we still have to hope that there are not too many black mines and we can somehow counter this, since I guess that's going to be the entire Tesla farm. So let's use a couple of more Cocaloons and let's just hope and pray that this blimp is somehow making it. Okay, the two Tesla are over there, first black mine, tornado trap. But this should be fine because the tornado trap is inside of the compartment. So our yetis are making it inside as well. We're using the rage over there just to make sure that everything is going down. The, um, the, the poison for the super minions obviously. And then my queen. Luckily the healers are not switching. Thank goodness. Nicely done healers. You're not switching. That's awesome. And now there's just one super minion surviving. So it seems like that our queen is going to the left. So let's prepare the funnel because we need to use the funnel otherwise our queen is most likely not going in. So um, yeah, let's get started. Warbreaker, another rage, so my queen is surviving. The yeti on the left is already doing his uh, his thing with the two wizards. So uh, so they should get the funnel over there. Uh, well, now another Kokodun just to make sure that there are no more black mines because the queen charge is kind of heavy. Um, especially with like the those two multi fern towers, we need to get through all of this quickly without losing too many healers. Now the second wall break, then the third wall break to um, to get into the clan castle, and I think I could have used a fourth wall break to get into the enemy or like into the next compartment, but I just felt like the jump spell is more safe because that's what we're going to do next using the jump spell. Um, in between of the clan castle and the expo so the queen can reach basically everything over there um, and now the king at the bottom side the super minions that's the next uh, next thing try to um, send the super minions in two waves otherwise you're kind of wasting a lot of those super shots like one of their five super long range shots thingies and then the next thing be careful with placing the warden when you're placing the warden, you need to make sure that the super minions, the long shots are already gone. Otherwise, the warden is flying in front of them. That's not a good thing. And now that's what I'm, what I'm saying. If I would have had the rage 
or the super uh, for the normal hybrid this would have been kind of useless so with the super minions that's way better for me obviously and now we're making our super minions invisible so they cannot get targeted by the scatter which is being the mvp move over here because you can see they're all so low there was so much splash, uh, splash damage around the bottom side our queen is surviving and this looks like a solid three star this attack was crazy i'm super happy that it worked and as I said, this might be my new favorite strategy. This attack strategy is just so much fun. This is everything which I love about this game, which is queen charging and then doing something pretty quick for the back end. It was basically already queen charge Lalo before this, but with queen charge Lalo, you had to take out certain things, for example, enemy heroes, things like that. With this strategy, it's completely different. And this is why I'm showing you a couple of more examples from the Legend League, and I would try to explain completely on how you guys can use this new strategy in legend in the clan war wherever you want because i think this strategy is going to be really high tier strategy um, because it's it's just so crazy strong so the first thing which is important about this strategy is that's sometimes not the easiest thing but it's that your queen is surviving the difference be between this strategy and for example queen charge hybrid is if the queen is dying in a queen charge hybrid attack the healers are switching over to the hybrid and are still having some purpose in the attack in this attack it's different in this attack if the queen is dying the healers are most likely dead as well and they're just wasted because they cannot heal super minions right like their air troops healers are not uh, targeting air that's it so i think that's kind of like a problem um this being said, it's the most important thing to keep your queen alive. But on the other side, you have so many spells to do so. In theory, you have four rages, you have two invisibility spells, and you have two freezes to keep your queen alive, which is a ton of spells. You can basically use every single spell into your queen charge, and that's the thing which I love about the strategy, because you can queen charge basically the entire base, because those super minions do not need spells. That's the great thing about them. If you have a rage like left over, that's awesome. Use it for them. It's a nice addition to their power. But on the other side, if you don't have any spells left over, that's no problem either for them. That's still great. So that's the really crazy thing about the strategy. So now we're getting kind of into the part. What should you take out? Like, what are the defenses which are you, like? What are the defenses which you should charge for? The main defenses which you should go for are splash damage buildings. So for example, the town hall. If you're not going into that. Um, the eagle is really important. Scatter shots. Those things are the main threats to your super minions. The next things are like air defenses or multi inferno towers. Even though I think multi inferno towers are more important because this splash damage is insanely annoying for your super minions, especially in combination with like red bombs and things like that. That's kind of scary. So the next really cool thing about the queen charge super minion is the next thing which I'm doing over here, and that's starting into the town hall with your super minion shots. So what I'm doing over here, I'm just sending in my super minions and they're just sniping the town hall. So the town hall explosion is basically wasted for this base builder or like for this uh, defender over here. And that's crazy, crazy value. Meanwhile, my queen is still alive. Obviously at the bottom side, we have one more rage to go. And since I see, okay, there's not going to be left or like a lot of damage on my queen bottom side. So I'm just raging my, my minions. The warden ability wasn't the best, if I'm completely honest, but it was kind of unlucky, I guess, that the hound came out and that there was actually a hound. Like, no, uh, enemy super minions would have been way better. But either way, there are just so many super minions left, and they're dealing so much damage. It's actually insane. Not only on defense, they're insanely strong, but on offense as well. And now you guys might ask, it's a, first off, why is this strategy a thing now? Like, why do you call it a new strategy? And, like... Why would you not use a different type of back and troop, like for example, dragons? So for the first question, why is this a thing now is first thing, now you have two super troops at the same time. A lot of the people out there who are still being able to charge proper bases with normal wall breakers, you guys are the true heroes. But at the same time for people like me, and I think the majority of people out there who cannot charge with the normal wall breakers, it's just so much easier with the super ball breakers and just just so much more relaxing. You can do so co way cooler queen charges. So this is the reason, the first reason why I think the strategy now became a thing. The second thing is because of the invisibility spell. This spell is just so powerful in queen charges, but at the same time, you need something, for example, if you do not use the invisibility spell for the queen charge, you need to use it for the second part, right? 
On a green charge hybrid, that's not possible really, because if you put it onto the miners and onto the, uh, onto the hawk riders, you will most likely hit the defenses as well, which makes it pretty useless. But on the ranged troops like the queen charge, uh, like the like the super minions, it's still really nice. So that's the next thing, the invisibility spell. Those two combined make this strategy a really, really big threat to bases in the new update. And to be honest, like I said, it's combining basically everything which I love about this game with queen charges and then a pretty quick backend, which is most of the time not really relying on what you took out before. So this combination makes this attack just so crazy strong. It's, it's insane. The next thing is you're really flexible on what you're using your heroes for. So for example, on the first attack in the Clan War League, I used the Royal Champion in combination with the King uh, to funnel my super minions. On this attack, for example, I'm using it to funnel my queen, like something completely different from the first attack, but it's still working because as long as you keep your queen going and supporting your queen with the super minions, everything is fine and you will be all right and should get the three star. So once again, we're setting up a crazy charge to get the entire base, to get most of the defenses. And well, we already took down, I think both scatters. I have to double check in a second, but we for sure already took down the eagle, more air defenses, there's one more scatter at the top side, it seems. But still, there's just, there's just so much value. Now the town is uh, getting taken down and the queens just keep going. And we will have like around about 1 minute and 30 seconds left to go for the rest of the base. And this is the one of my first attacks which I did with this strategy, even though it's now later in the video. But you can see over here why exactly you should never, you should never ever place the warden first <laughs> or like place the warden before your super minions lost their power shots because the warden has a smaller range than the super minions and that's a pretty, pretty big problem so you have to delay the warden uh, to place it otherwise it's a little bit risky <laughs> now the slammer for the enemy queen the super minions are taking down the enemy queen in combination with the dragon everything all right over there my queen is still alive and this is once once again another crushing three shot like I said, I think this strategy became quickly my favorite strategy in the game. At the same time, it's pretty strong. So it's just not like a, a meme army or whatever. And uh, well, I can just recommend it to all of you guys to try it. And I have one more attack which I want to share with you guys, which I will kind of more like explain why I did what I did. Because so far, I explained more in general why I think this strategy is strong, why the strategy is now a new strategy and not like was not a new thing before the uh, super minions got introduced into the game and everything around that. So now let's take a look at this base. First things first, um, normally you're not charging for the town hall with this, um, with, this, uh, with this army, or at least let's say I'm not charging into the town normally with this army because the town is normally not a big threat. You have this, the blimp or like the slammer and the blimp, you have the super minis, something, you have always something to take down the town hall. So that's not a problem for you. You want to take down scatter shots, multi infernal towers and air sweepers, for example, are a big threat as well. So that's what I did over here. I'm charging into the single infernal tower, which gives me access to the enemy queen, which is a really annoying thing as well, like enemy queen and enemy royal champion. It's not as bad on a queen charge as like on a queen charge Lalo attack because, well, on a Queen Shards Isle attack, you have to basically take those out, otherwise you're really, really struggling. Um, but on this one, I just like go in, in there, take down all of the defenses, and now then the enemy enemy queen, and I have access into the enemy scatter shot as well. So we have just so much value over there, which is crazy. I'm opening the next compartment so I can target later on the inside compartment. Perfect freeze and poison combination. This is always what you're looking for when you're facing an enemy super minion clan castle. You have to be really quick. Poison and freeze the enemy super minions with the headhunters which are coming out and the enemy goblins or whatever is in there. You can just ignore that and hit it with your queen. This is just insanely strong. The next thing which I'm looking out for is kind of what should I do next, which is in this specific situation, I just do not want to get into the tunnel with my... Um, with my super minions and that's why I'm using the blimp to take down the town hall. I have to use the rage but at the moment I'm fine on, ra on, on spells which means I can just invest that. Now the rage for the queen I have nothing left but I have the queen ability but there are not that many expos left. I already charged most of the expos right so that's not the problem. Now now the super minions are getting into, into the base. We're using the invisibility spell to keep the royal champion alive. I just freaking love this spell. It's, it's so strong. 
keeping a couple of the super minions alive as well with the invisibility spell. And then the queen is at the top side, our minions at the left side, and um, tanking a couple of black mines at the scatter shot shots with our super minions. And this is looking really, really good for now. Obviously, there's still the eagle and two air defenses left on the back end. But to be honest, we have still our headhunter for the enemy king. We have still our queen, which is still surviving. And this is the key, keeping the queen alive. It's basically that the super minions are basically to clear up the rest of the base, which you cannot get because otherwise you're time failing. So this attack is all about charging the entire base and then having some sort of troop for cleaning things up. And this, I feel like, is the perfect troop or like it's the perfect combination with the um, with the super minions because dragons, for example, if you want to compare that, dragons are way too slow. They're really slow. So super minions are way quicker because they deal more damage. They're more squishy, so they can more it's more likely that they're going to die. But they're just more quicker, and that's the thing about the strategy. Queen survived. It's going to be a triple. Easy peasy, and this strategy is just insane. Let me guys know what you think. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Until tomorrow, see you guys, and bye-bye.